welcome to the comic book call for this week, November 14th. I'm your host, ComicHead84. I'm going to run you through the books that I grabbed this week. But first, the art print before you may look familiar to some if you subscribe to Comic Tom 101's Mystery Mail Call. He includes a piece of viewer submitted art in every mail call that he does each month. So I thought that was pretty cool. And this She Hulk piece is just fire, beautiful. So I wanted to give this artist a shout out. His Instagram handle is here. Check him out. Show him some support. Support up and coming artists. That's what it's about. Now, as we get on to the books, I'm going to tell you, stick around to the end where I'm going to unsheath a CGC high grade key issue that just arrived moments before I fired this camera up. So stick around for that. Looking forward to showing you that. I'm going to start off with some books that I actually came out last week, but I ordered through Midtown online, so they arrived a little bit later. So I'm just going to run through these real quick. James Bond 007 number one from Dynamite Comics. Really fire cover art. Really weird uh, hit or miss art inside the book. Some pages look real grainy. Other pages look real sharp. Kind of strange. The writing work is done by Greg Pak on this book. He's done a lot of Hulk writing in his day. And he wrote a trade paperback that I own, a Magneto Testament. I got that in trade, and that's a pretty well-done book. I'm a big Magneto fan, so when I saw his name, I was looking forward to it. But this thing is going to be a pass moving forward. I'm a sucker for number one, so I grabbed it. Uh, I will not continue to read James Bond, 007. Out of Darkness, number one, from Image Comics. I have the Afu Chan Virgin Variant cover. Uh, this book was tremendous. Really good read. Cool sci-fi story. John Lehman from Chu, Image Comic Chu fame. Uh, he's the one that picks up the writing duties on this book, and he killed it. I'm going to continue to to follow this book. It's like a cool mix between Star Trek and Aliens with some grittiness mixed into it. So I'm going to stick with this book. Next up, staying on the sci-fi train, we got Battlestar Galactica Classic number one. This was just a cover buy for me, but what a cover it is. I love that vintage look that it has. Almost looks like a sticker. So pretty cool. I grabbed this. I haven't read it. To be straight with you, I haven't never seen any Battlestar Galactica before. I'm not a huge sci-fi guy, but I used to watch the shit out of The Next Generation, me and my brother. Uh, and it seems like I would like Battlestar Galactica if it's similar to that, which I heard it is. But I don't really know a good starting point. So if you're watching this and you do know the deal with Battlestar, shoot me a comment. What What's the starting point? Is it a show? A movie? Like, I really don't know shit about Battlestar. So let me know where to start. Hook me up. Ooh, Boris the Bear. I forgot this one was in here. This thing definitely did not come out last week. This book came out in, like, 87. And if you've seen a previous video of mine, uh, I was telling you guys about how this is the first published artwork by Rob Liefeld. It's not even interior artwork. It's like fan submitted art in the back of the book. So pretty cool. I consider this a nice little historic key to pick up. And it goes for like a couple bucks. So if I continue to find this thing for a couple dollars, I'm going to grab it every time. Uh, might as well grab yourself a copy. It's a pretty cool issue. Justice League 11, the Matina variant. I'm not currently reading Snyder's run on Justice League, but I do follow pretty much every Matina cover that comes out. So I grabbed this one. This cover has something that <laughs> irks me. Now that I see it, I can't unsee it. This shark looks like he has a wonky eye. There's a bubble coming off of Aquaman's trident, and it looks like it's giving this goddamn shark a wonky eye. And I cannot unsee it. So <laughs> I might be putting that in your brain now too, but that fucking shark looks like he has a crazy eye. Let's get to this week's books. First up, we got Patience, Conviction, Revenge by Aftershock Comics. This thing has been a really good read. I've been covering this since, or reading this since issue one. Really cool dystopian future in cyberpunk kind of Las Vegas. 
This dude's on a revenge tour, just trying to whoop ass. He's got a crew of a bunch of homemade robots that he's made. Uh, really cool comic. I'm really digging Aftershock comics, everything they put out. High quality books, just the paper and the cover itself. The artwork is all real quality. And the books have been pretty legit thus far too. So I'm very pleased with this one. I recommend you pick it up, man. Now we have Bitter Root, number one, Image Comics. This might be one of the best reads of the week. There were three really outstanding books this week. This is one of them. If I was to give, I don't really give a grading system, but this thing would get uh, probably 4.5 out of 5 fireballs. Uh, really cool. I picked up the Mike Mignola variant cover. That thing is sick. And the book itself is just really dope. 1920s, Harlem Renaissance era. Kind of got a black power, black empowerment vibe to it. It has a little bit of a political theme throughout it which can sometimes turn me off on a book, even if I agree with the like the political stance that they're taking. Uh, in this case, you know, like black empowerment and, and stuff, which I'm all for that. Uh, but sometimes even if I'm, like I said, with the political point, I just, I don't know, don't like to be lectured throughout a book. Or sometimes it's just heavy handed. It's just really on the nose. But this is not one of those books. A really good writer can toe the line where they're imploring the message that they want while still just making it a good read on the surface, you know? And that's what this book does. Uh, this book is really fire. Like I said, one of my picks of the week. I'm going to continue to follow this book for sure. Venom number eight. I am a little behind on my Venom reading. I, I have one through eight. But I think I left off on issue 6 or something like that. To be honest, I'm just getting a little venomed out. Between all the venom hype it's been getting in the movie. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to finish this run at number 10. Next up, I got it, y'all. Domino number 8. The fire cover. This is a cover A, too. Sick Morbius cover. I know people are kind of specking on this book that it's, you know, it's a hot one. I guess because it has a low print run, because this book sucks. Uh, it's just a shitty series, Domino. So that's probably the, why the print order is pretty low, which I guess adds value to the book. I don't know. I'm happy I got it. Ah, yes. Black Order, number one. This book might be my pick of the week. I just love the shit out of this book. I love books that follow villains. And follow villains that are villains. You know, sometimes a villain will get a book, kind of like Venom. Magneto's done it a couple times, where it's technically a Venom, a villain book, but they're almost turning into heroes, or just their moral compass is straightening out. This is just villains, they're slaughtering fools. There's a sick inner monologue on the first page by Corbus Glaive on this thing that is just, you know, it'll give you chills that these guys are bloodthirsty. So... If you're not familiar, Thanos is four horsemen, in this case five horsemen because they added a character, Black Swan, it's Proxima Midnight, Black Dwarf, Corvus Glaive, Ebony Maw, and this chick Black Swan, who was not in the, you know, if you're thinking of the movie, she wasn't in the movie, uh, but damn, just really well done, sick, sick cover by John Tyler Christopher, usually I don't trust anybody that has three first names like that but in this case i'm gonna let him slide because that cover is amazing and this thing is just my jam sick cover good read what more could you ask for next up we have wonder woman number 58 this is a book that i am not currently reading this is a cover grab the jenny frizen cover She's just been killing it, huh? She does a really good job, especially with Wonder Woman. This thing is a beauty. Had to pick this up. You know, I've been trying to adjust my palette so that I'm not just going after covers as much and I'm grabbing books that I know I'm going to read, but then something like this comes out and it gets me every time. Suicide Squad. Uh, kind of a similar thing, man. The, the writing on Suicide Squad has... 
dropped off a bit. I'm not really interested in the story very much. But as I said before, Matina is my guy. I continue to follow him. And this cover, it's, it's not really a connecting cover, but a connecting theme, I guess, of the characters getting blasted off from the side. I hope we get a payoff on where this blast is coming from. This is number 48. I'm pretty sure this run's going to end at 50. There is a katana sword in this cover. So I'm assuming maybe number 49 will be katana and somebody getting blown up. And then number 50, show me the source of what this explosion is, man. That would be a really good payoff for all these covers because they don't connect. So at least let it connect in that way. Red Hood Outlaw, number 28. Red Hood is my guy. I'm just big on the Bat Family. I love the Bat Family books. I always cover the grab the cover A and B for Red Hood. Yasmin Putri continues to put out gems of covers for Red Hood. The story's pretty cool. The only thing about this... <clears throat> the only thing about this story is... I felt like the whole issue probably could have been covered in like six to eight pages it was just wasn't super eventful and it just seemed like it was one scene that got dragged out through a whole issue so kind of a filler issue I mean it did bring us from point a to point b to some extent and set up something for the next issue but god damn it was not a lot happening they just kind of stretched out this one scene but it's cool I'm sticking with this book regardless uh Red Hood's a really interesting character for me, and I dig that new uh, costume big time. <sighs> Detective 992. Guys, this book is dog shit. This book sucks. I pretty much hate this book front to back. Uh, I'm not even really a hater on... on Comics like that, I'm not real visceral uh, against even a poor written book or whatever. But this thing fucking pissed me off. Let's start with this garbage cover. Okay, it's Delato. Yeah, that's great. But Delato blew it on this cover. Look at this fucking thing. If you look at where his chest meets his shoulder, it's it's all fucked up. Where does the peck end? Where does this arm begin? It looks like this shoulder's disjointed over his peck. It's... He blew it. He fucked it up. And why does Batman... Since when does Batman have orange lining on the inside of his cape? That is silly. The whole point of Batman in his cape is that when he rolls up on you at night and, you know, you're trying to pull your gun out and shoot at Batman, he opens up his cape so that his whole body becomes engulfed in shadow, so when you shoot at him, he's a harder target, you know? Instead, why the fuck would he have an orange lined cape so that when he does that move and spreads out his cape, and you're wearing a black or dark gray suit, you're just creating an outline like, yo, shoot me right here, here's my body, that orange is gonna outline his shit. Uh, so, ridiculous. And I just and it just wasn't very alluring to me. And the inside of this book is what really set me off. The writing on this thing is garbage. Uh, there's grammatical errors throughout the book. Like, straight up wrong words, misspelled words. The editor blew it on this fucking book, too. The editor blew it. There's grammatic errors. The writing is just cringy. It's so lazy. There's... Batman is speaking in a way that he would just never speak like that. I could probably go on for a while citing specific examples. I'm not going to do that. I, I might very well just make a video just devoted to shitting on this book. Because uh, I love Batman. And this thing is just a travesty. Let me put the writer on blast and publicly shame him. James Robinson. James Robinson blew it. It's just like... There's no subtlety. Uh, all the characters' lines are just unnatural and just feeding you plot points. And oh my god, this thing is so terrible. So avoid this book. 
at all costs. It's disappointing because I'm pretty happy with the other Batman run, the Batman title. I figured I'd, you know, try Detective out, but god damn, this thing is bad. So anyway, like I said, I could go on for a while just ripping this book apart, but I'm getting upset, so I think we need to move on. Hey, Electric Warriors number one. This book was awesome. This was the third of the, I told you that I had three gems this week, three really strong hitters this week, and this is the third, man, Electric Warriors number one. I'm really not very familiar with these characters or this whole premise, and dude, I'm I'm all in on this book. This thing is really cool. It's It takes place well in the future, so it's not in like current DC continuity. It's the Cosmic Dark Age is how they describe it. It's like... I think I heard someone say it's like six or seven hundred years in the future, something like that. There's a cool way that Superman and Superman's mythology is used throughout the book. So that was cool. It kind of tethered it back to the DC world that we know. And it's almost like just Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat type of fighters from all around the world are all going to this main tournament to fight and represent. I'm not exactly clear on you know what the title what they're fighting for per se other than just bragging rights or most heroic or something like that but we'll see where that goes the characters that have been introduced have been cool interesting i'm really into it this book is written by travel foreman which almost sounds like a job but uh, traveling foreman i don't know his first name's travel but hey that's cool uh, I picked up the variant cover by Bangle. Um, yeah, his name is Bangle. One word. Like the Taiga or the Cincinnati team. Uh, I mean, hey, I guess. I mean, the art, in my opinion, really isn't good enough that you can go walk around going by like one name, like a Sting or Madonna. I think he needs to give it some time before he gets to to that level but hey i got the bangle variant i kind of regret that i didn't get the the a cover because i kind of preferred that one in hindsight but yeah man this book is a gem highly recommend it okay it's cgc key time let's unveil this baby uh x-men 282 First appearance of Bishop, 9.6. Really happy with this. This thing looks beautiful. You know, I've said before that right now I'm just in acquiring X-Men key mode. I'm certain that once Marvel and Disney gets their hands on the X-Men franchise, it's just going to explode. It's going to be just as big as the Avengers and these Spider-Man movies are now. They run through these Avengers characters. They're not going to keep retreading that ground, so... I'm certain that they're banking on the X-Men. It's one of the dopest franchises ever. How could they not? So, anyway, just snagging these up. I grabbed the Gambit at a 9.6 recently as well. Today, I've added Bishop to that collection. And just really happy with this gem right here. And that does it for this week, guys. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Sometimes I can I can babble and talk about comics for for hours. So, I'm trying to, to lim- limit myself. And not just babble on about these books all day. So, I appreciate you checking in. I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed these books. And stay tuned till next time. I'm going to keep serving you up this hot comic book content. Peace.